Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Environmental Sciences, video 23, it's on energy consumption. If I think about the amount of energy that my body requires in one day, it's really not that much, a little over 2,000 kilocalories of energy, and I could get most of that in one large pepperoni pizza. But I use more energy than that. Right now I'm using a computer, I'm using the internet, I'm, I'm using lights, I'm heating my house. If I go somewhere, I'm probably going to drive. And if we were to put that in pizzas, the average person in the U.S. requires over 300 lights large pepperoni pizzas of energy every day and most of that energy is coming from fossil fuels. As we talked about in the last video, energy is the ability to do work or transfer heat and if we look at human consumption of energy over time, we can learn lessons from the past as we plan towards the future. And where did our energy come from to begin with? Just like that pizza, it came from our food. But it didn't take long before humans discovered fire and we could unlock the power found within wood. We domesticated animals and we could leverage some of their power. We used wind power very early, grinding up grains and moving water around, and our societies started to grow. But as the population increased, we underwent our first energy crisis. And an energy crisis occurs when you have a lack of supply or an increase in the price of the source of that energy. In this case, deforestation was leading to a decrease in the amount of wood and charcoal that we had. We couldn't support our population. Thankfully, we discovered coal. Coal has a much larger return on investment, way more energy. It's wood, but wood that was deposited way underneath the earth thousands of years ago, and we could get energy from that. It led us into the Industrial Revolution. We then discovered oil and gas, but with each of these, since they're non-renewable energy Energy sources, we've seen and will continue to see a number of energy crises as well. And so as we plan towards the future, it's important that we come up with an economic solution for our energy. And so we should look at the energy's return on investment. As, as we start to see a decrease in oil, things like uh, wind and solar are going to be more feasible or more viable over time. And we also have to consider the externalities. These are fossil fuels that we're using. And with that, we're increasing pollution, we're increasing global warming. And so as we plan for the future, we want to shift towards renewable sources of energy. And more importantly, sustainable. So that over time, we have a consistent amount of energy and we eliminate the energy crisis over time. And so if we look at our energy sources over time, this is from 1770 till today, you can see a huge increase in the amount of wood that we were using. But over time, that was replaced by coal. You see an exponential growth in coal. We then see an exponential growth in oil and gas. We see an increase in nuclear. Right now, we're seeing an increase in uh, renewable resources as well. And so over time, we'll get a decrease in the supplies of these energy sources. And an energy crisis occurs if we have a decrease in supply and also an increase in price. And so if we look at price for a second. This is the price of oil in the U.S. since it was essentially discovered. You can see it's variable to begin with. The lower line here is the price and the upper line is putting it in modern day $2,008. You can see that oil prices were fairly consistent for a long period of time. You can see a big jump right here. Why is that? We had the 1973 oil crisis or energy crisis. What caused that? It was foreign policy. The U.S. was involved in the Yom Kippur War. We were funding Israel. OPEC, um, a number of Arab countries, put an embargo on the oil so we couldn't get cheap oil from, from the Middle East. And as a result, the price went from $3 a barrel up to $12 a barrel. And as a result, we had lines at the pump. There wasn't enough gas. We saw another oil crisis in the 1970s as well with the Iranian Revolution. There was this decrease in supply at this point, increase in price. Again, we had huge lines at the pump. And there were government policies put forward to start to increase um, mileage of cars, for example, and ways that we could conserve our oil. We saw the same thing in 2003. This is a multifactorial cause. It's A lot of it has to do with global re requirements for energy. We see a huge increase in oil prices as well. Now the oil prices are dropping off, but over time, since it's a non-renewable resource, we're going to have decreases in the amount of oil that we can find, increases in the price over time. And if we look at where's our energy coming from today, it's oil, 
coal, and natural gas. That's where most of our energy is coming from uh, right now in the world. Now, the renewable sources are a growing uh, segment, but if we look at that, there's still traditional biomass. So this is going to be wood that makes up 9% of the energy that we're getting from our environment. And so over time, what we have to move towards is away from non-renewable and towards renewable sources of energy. Now, we won't just do that on our own. As the model we've talked about before, the earth supports society and everything is driven by the economy. We have to have economic drivers that are going to move us towards these renewable sources of energy. And a good way to look at that is the energy return on investment. Basically what you do is you look at a ratio of how much energy it requires to get the energy source and how much we get out of it. So it's a ratio of energy acquired versus energy consumed to get that energy. And so if we look at something like hydropower, for every one dollar invested we get a hundred dollars of energy back. Or coal is going to be an 80 to 1 ratio. Now things that you may have heard put forward as a solution, if we look at ethanol coming from corn, it's going to be around 1.3 to 1. And so we have to put a huge amount of energy to grow the corn. We use fossil fuels to harvest it to get energy out. And so it's not economically viable at this point to use some of these renewable resources. But these are going to change over time. So if we look at oil imports in the 1990s, that ratio was 40 to 1. But if we look at oil imports in 2007, you can see that's dropped way down closer to around 12 to 1. And now if we look at things like wind, it has a higher ratio. And so there's going to be a movement away from fossil fuels towards renewable resources. And the reason why is that they're going to become cheaper. The technology is going to improve. And the one thing that we're not even considering yet are all the externalities of these fossil fuels. We really don't put a true value on the fossil fuels because as we use them, we're polluting our environment. And one of the big ones is that we're increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which is leading to global change in temperature. And so these externalities, these external costs of these fossil fuels are things that we're going to have to consider as well. So where do we move in the future? We want to move towards renewable forms of energy, energy that keeps coming back so we can eliminate the energy crisis. We want them to be sustainable, be it solar or wind or sustainable biomass. And so did you learn the following? Could you pause the video at this point and fill in the blanks? If not, let me do it for you. Um, so energy consumption over time was food, then we used wood, um, animals wind, we then used coal, oil, gas, and with each of these we have energy crisis associated with it as we decrease supply, increase the price. And then the last one is we really have to start considering not only the return on investment but the externalities. What cost do we have to society by using fossil fuels or non-renewables? Well, I hope you learned all of that and I hope that was helpful.